Good morning, everyone. Morning, guys. So we have officially left Italy. We were there for 80 days and it was awesome. But now we're here in London, England. And now I'm gonna bring my stomach to the table, so to speak, to try some typically British meals. If you've watched any of our vlogs in the past, you know that Crystal's been our go-to when it comes to eating foods of any kind. That's why I got chubby, sorry guys. From the cheesesteaks of Philadelphia, to the pastrami sandwiches of New York, to that less than satisfying tripe sandwich in Florence, and even recently some black ink squid pasta down in Venice. So when I said, hey, let's go to London and do a food review, she said, I need a break. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm gonna let her order whatever she wants when we go eat, and I will order the traditional British dishes and let you know exactly what I think about this British food. So, enough talk. Let's go. We are Crystal and Terry, and in the spring of 2021, we decided to spend one year of our lives as full-time travelers. Since then, we've had some really great adventures, and yet, there's still more to come. So subscribe to our channel, and come along as we leave the life we've always known to live the life of our dreams. finding our first location to have some of this traditional British food and one particular place is called the Sherlock Holmes. Bangers and mash, fantastic. I don't know how I haven't known about this earlier in life. I grew up on meat and potatoes, and that's what it was. Mashed potatoes were thick, which I like the consistency of that. The gravy was great, and the sausages weren't gristly and greasy as I expected they would be. They weren't, they were fantastic. That was an incredible meal. I would highly recommend the bangers and mash at Sherlock Holmes in London. But now, we need some walking. We need an exercise to get some of this off of us. So we're gonna head over to the very famous London Eye to get one of the best views of the city of London that we could possibly get. Let's go.
was formally opened in December 1999 as a way to celebrate the millennium. At that time, it was the tallest wheel in the world, standing at 443 feet tall. Since then, it's fallen to fourth place, behind two other wheels built in Singapore, and of course, the high roller built in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nevertheless, the London Eye is still the most popular paid tourist attraction in all of the UK, with over three and a half million visitors every year. Another fun fact about the London Eye, for all of you who fear the number 13, there are 32 passenger capsules on the London Eye, but they are numbered 1 to 12 and 14 to 33. So there's no actual number 13 capsule on the Eye, which is good news for all you Trescadecophobiacs. So, the London Eye, if you have some money you want to waste by standing in a really long line, crowded full of people, to be jammed onto a gondola with at least 30 other people, to take the slowest Ferris wheel ride of your life, which only consists of one revolution, then come to the London Eye in London, because that is the place for you. Hello all my history lovers, especially for all those people back in the States and my die-hard Texans. I have something pretty special for you today. I'm standing at 4 St. James Street in London, England. Now it's currently housing the uh, Rudd and Brothers Wine Merchants store. But back between 1836 and 1845, this building housed the offices for the embassy to the Republic of Texas. During that time period, Texas was a republic and it was trying to become a sovereign nation. So the president, Sam Houston, sent his secretary of state, Dr. Ashville Smith, over here to run these offices and establish a relationship with England, who actually supported Texas in their bid to become a nation. However, after about nine years of different obstacles and pressures, Texas finally gave in and became a state in 1845. However, if you ever find yourself walking along St. James Street in London, you can stop off and see this plaque, which has been mounted on the side of the building to forever commemorate that the offices of that embassy once housed right here. A little piece of maybe forgotten or overlooked history for all my friends back in Texas. Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to start off with something called the traditional English breakfast, or as they may say here, brekkie. Really, they say brekkie. I'm not just making that up. So the English breakfast starts off quite normal. A couple of fried eggs, sausage, bacon, toast, a bit of coffee or tea to accompany it. But then it takes a twist. It also consists of grilled tomatoes, mushrooms, and baked beans. So, I guess we might as well dive into some of the more odd things. I mean, beans and mushrooms aren't odd, but with eggs, they could be. Let me get some bean and mushroom. Let's just do the whole thing. Mm. There we go. Mm. 
it's a weird combination of foods for me, I have to admit. I like mushrooms and beans, I like tomatoes, and I like my bacon, sausage, and eggs. Just not all together. It's a rather large and hearty breakfast, so if you're here, you might as well give the English breakfast a try. But again, you may want to separate the foods because the collusion doesn't really seem to work for the old American palate. So unlike Terry, I actually love having these mushrooms in the morning with my breakfast and the baked beans. I really like savory foods, <laughs> so even though it's breakfast time, it totally works for me. The only thing I kind of wish they did a little different was to make the bacon crispy. There's a chef back there. I'm sure I could ask him to make some extra crispy bacon, but you know, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just eat this bacon. Anyway, I've enjoyed my English breakfasts. trying another traditional British meal called Sunday Roast. No surprise, typically served on a Sunday. This consists of roasted meats, potatoes, carrots, applesauce, gravy, and Yorkshire pudding. It's really virtually a feast. This is a big, big meal. I mean, look at this thing. This is the Yorkshire pudding. How big this thing is. Look at this. I'm gonna have to give this a try here. Hold on. Okay, that's just bread. <laughs> Let's dig into the roast. See what this is about. Ready? There we go. Hey, that's delicious. I don't know why I used to hear rumors that British food isn't very good. Everything we've had here is delicious so far. The bangers and mash was great. This is very good, very, very filling. That English breakfast I had was a bit odd, mixing the tomatoes and beans together with the eggs and bacon. But the bacon, eggs, and sausage were delicious. I will say, though, that this is in the very, very, very crowded city of London. And that if you want to go anywhere and enjoy a meal, you better make reservations. We needed a reservation just to get into this place called the Culpepper. We're a few miles north of London Tower, London Bridge. It's a great place. A lot of these places are wonderful. The character and the charm and the old buildings. Now we gotta get busy on this before this food gets cold. Well, the Sunday roast was a big success. Quite a meal. You can also get uh, roasted beef. We got roasted pork, but you can get beef. Just ask. It's a pretty common dish almost any restaurant in town. As I mentioned when I was blathering on over lunch, that London has been great, but it's also extremely crowded. Be prepared. It is a bit pricey, although I'm sure you could probably find some bargains if you really look for them, but we have not been looking and we have not found them. So we are going to leave London tomorrow. The people have been great and friendly and the food's been delicious, but we are going to head about 70 miles southwest of here to Portsmouth along the coast to give you a very different perspective of this beautiful country of England. So I hope you will stay with us and we'll see you on the next one.